I'm your host, Chris of the South. Y'all give it up for Mimi. Mala! Yes. And you leave What's up, everybody? So we have special guests that literally drove five to six hours away to be with us to release their story. Mac and Steph, thank you for being with What's us up, on Peace on the yeah, Street. Thank you all, man. Yeah. Thank you. So thank please, you. please, Mac, tell us exactly what's going on because I know it was very important for you to be here tonight. Um, what brings me here, hello to everyone listening. Thank you for joining us. Um, on uh, March 25th, 2000. 22 at about 2 p.m. Um, my lover, best friend, Natalie Mandalay, better known as Lacey, was um, brutally massacred in our home during a home invasion robbery. Wow. Um, Stephanie, to my left, all three of us are in a polyamorous relationship. We've been together for a few years. Okay. Me and um, Lacey was involved for five years. And uh, I mean, just a beautiful relationship. Wow. No arguments, like just a dream. And um, we just came back from Aruba for Sal for like three weeks. Like we're always traveling throughout the countries. Um, so anyway, I, I have a couple different businesses, a jeweler, um, clothing line, liquidation resale, just whatever I got my hands in. So, um, the girls were, we were working on credit and we were pr about to purchase two homes for Airbnb. So I decided to post some jewelry on Instagram. And I guess that's what um, kind of triggered the whole thing. Mm. There was a female that was involved. There's four people that are involved. One of them has been um, captured. His name's Kamari Oliver and um, he was a driver. Hmm. So he's in, he's incarcerated now, um, but there was a female that Lacey was cool with supposedly, hmm. and um, she set us up. That's exactly what happened. Wow! I uh, went to the store. We were putting the house up was going for sale. They put it on Thursday. This happened on a Friday, and we ran out of cleaning supplies. Stephanie was cleaning the bathroom. She asked me to go to the store, and uh, man, I understand. Yeah, Take your time. Man. So I, um, I went to the store, and uh, I was gone maybe 10, 15 minutes. So when I came back home, uh, I pulled up. And I seen a white Mercedes in, in my driveway. And I was like, I said, you know, who, who who's in my driveway? A little choice words. And um, and I thought it was her, the girl's Uber because the girl came over that day. And I thought it was her Uber. And then all of a sudden, I mean, this all happened like within five seconds. And it was on a, a bunch of gunshots and I said man that sounds like gunshots and at that time he the driver yelled hey and he he bolted he took off fast and I and I looked and I turned I was in a 1970 convertible 442 I mean it's, it's beautiful day out I took it for just a drive when I turned it around I seen his his license plate covered hmm. and I'm like and, you know, I'm street dude. I already know what's going on. So I, I said, damn, she set us up. I knew right away. And then all of a sudden I seen the two, there was three of them came out, the female and two guys. They were all hmm. masked up, all in black. They came out of my house. They seen me. They got scared and they ran to a wall. I lived in a cul-de-sac. So I didn't have a weapon on me. So the only weapon I had was my car. So I took off after the, the vehicle, and he, when he took off, he kind of missed the exit. It's a cul-de-sac road on, on my street, two cul-de-sacs. So he missed the exit, and I mm -hmm. ended up crashing into him probably about 60 or 70 miles per hour. And then he came out of the car shooting at me. Whoa. Um, when I got out, I still was going towards him. He ran, jumped the fence. When I came back to the house, Stephanie had called me. Um, Stephanie was in the house? Yeah, Stephanie was in the house. Whoa. 
um, she she was held at gunpoint in another Whoa. room. Whoa. And um, I'm thankful that they didn't kill her because it was very close. The, the confusion of everything happening took them away from their plan. They, they were hmm. in chaos. They didn't expect me to come home that fast. Mm -hmm. So I caused the whole issue after, well, that's when I came in the house and Lacey was shot about 26 times. If you didn't come back, wow. it could have been more. More could have been done. If it wasn't for Lacey, Lacey's my hero. Because hmm. if it wasn't for her, she shot the assailant. She shot him? Yeah, she shot him. She shot him two times. Oh. And he had an automatic weapon and oh he let God. loose and that's why she has so many, so many shots. Huh. So when I came up the stairs, um, I know this is really fresh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, and I, take your time. Wow. And he must have released the story to find the assailants. This is why he's here. Yeah. So I, um, I just seen her lifeless on the bed, and you gotta understand, this is someone that I was around for five years on a day in day out basis, and. Uh, I jumped on her to try to give her mouth to mouth, and I knew she was gone. And uh, so the police, you know, they do their job. You know, right away they're gonna just like that young lady or the lady that had the shooting with, with James. Um, you're gonna be the suspect. <laughs> they grab me, and which is fine. Uh, they were pretty. Pretty rough, but then after everything got talked about and they realized that I wasn't, you know, somebody a suspect. Um, I mean, basically, what we did is we just upped and left. We don't, we don't even live there no more. We left pretty did much you? everything behind. Hmm. Um, I put my cars in uh, storage, and we came across. Country. We're from Miami originally. We and this out, happened in Vegas, right? Out, been in Las Vegas. Um, we moved out there about five years ago. And everything was wow. beautiful. We had a beautiful life. And uh, just in the blink of an eye, with some people that wanted to take someone else's hard work, hmm. I mean, they they got the most valuable thing. They took the most valuable thing in her life, 24 years old. Wow. Um, on top of the world. If you were to see <sighs> pictures and videos, you would be like, wow. Like, she was beautiful inside and out. Um, so... I had to fly her body home to Miami. Uh, so in the process of laying her to rest, I was thinking about all the people out there that have had murders happen in their house or tragedy that they don't have the finances to do anything. Right. To get up and go, to they leave. Can't yeah either bury their own loved hmm. one properly. So as I'm sitting there thinking, that thank, thankfully I'm blessed enough to do this, I came up with Lacey's Legacy, nonprofit. Wow. Because I wanted to be able to help people. Imagine a person being murdered in their home and they have to live there and see that every single right. day. They have to relive that. You don't yeah, think man. about this. Unbelievable. That's that's hard. Because they cannot pick up and go yeah, the next day. You're can't stuck just go. there hmm. looking at the same room that your loved one was raped, murdered, assassinated, whatever happened. And so I was I was like, you know, we were always, we're always about charity. We're always helping hmm. people. So I was like, you know, she, she had... <laughs> two days before that she had asked me to put this blanket in her car and it was a white blanket and she was like can you put the blanket in my car for me and I was like yeah and she's like no in the back and I was like yes ma'am no because she was <laughs> like you can't be in the back seat right right but I put it in the back of her car and um she wanted to give it to a homeless because it gets cold out of Vegas people don't realize well, that it gets cold, cold absolutely does freezing it snows so, there. I'm just saying. Yeah, I was there one time when it snowed. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. So, so she wanted to give the blanket to somebody, and 
she never got that opportunity. So when me and Steph left, we made sure that we Whoa. gave it away, and that was a, that was our oh. last stop right before. Um, and so with this nonprofit organization, um, I'm gonna do a lot of good. <laughs> I'm gonna help a lot of families that are in a bad situation. You know, it costs so much money just to fly your your family in. Can I ask roundabout how much it cost? It cost me oh, a little over four thousand dollars just to fly her in. Wow! 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 And then another thing is what I want to do is with this nonprofit is I want to I want to be the spokesperson for a person because hmm. when you're grieving. You're not paying attention, and the funeral homes are crooks. Mm. Right, exactly. I caught this funeral home jerking me for about two grand extra off of little things here and there, and I caught her red-handed. Whoa. And I specifically asked her, I said, let me ask you a question, Art. Do you upsell yeah. anything, or is it just, and she, she went, she blinked her eyes and looked down, and she said, oh, no, we just charged. She tried to charge me. I did a butterfly release for Lacey. I did a hundred wow. um, butterflies. It cost about about four hundred dollars. This lady was charging me eight hundred dollars for twelve butterflies. Come wow. on now. How can you catch these guys though? Like, how can you catch that? Uh, do you ever think about this? How hard? But they all do it. How hard can you be? People are already going Cold. through tragic situations. But Prince, that's where the money's at. That's yeah. where they get that money. I, I know it, but I'm just saying, but how you don't, you don't have you to do be? that. You don't have to. I know it. You're preying on a vulnerable yep. People that's person. already going through and it. Her and oh, yeah. her family was there. So mm. her brother, he's a, he's a Miami-Dade detective. Wow. Her, her what? father was there. Her All of these people were in there with the, with the funeral director. And when I <sighs> came in, yeah, I'm crying and I'm emotional, but you ain't finna get over on me. Yep. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You ain't finna get me. So I sat down with her and I said, let me find out where's all this money, where's this going? And she's like, oh, this, and it's going to cost that. Well, when I broke it down, I got it all the way down and I out went out. So I did a horse and carriage with her. Wow. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I went got her a pink coffin, like it was all pink wow. and um it was beautiful. So when I asked her, she was charging me twenty five hundred, but I found it with the same ironically, she was working with me. I know Lacey mm. was there because mm. the person I found another company that did it for two grand and then they had to stop they couldn't do it. So they gave me another number. I call that number, and the guy, the gentleman goes, this is the same thing. We were going to do this with this funeral home. And he goes, I quoted them at seventeen fifty. Wow. And they were charging me twenty five hundred. Wow. They were going to pocket Made that, Prince. Extra 800 something Yeah, they would have pocketed it. And I was like, wow. So I went back. So I told him, I said, let's keep this between me and you because hmm. I want. I didn't want there to be no pressure in the, in the <laughs> thing. You know I what I'm saying? Because everybody was calm. Yet, and right. I took care of everything. I didn't want her father paying for nothing, Whoa. her brother, nobody. Whoa. Coming, I'll pay. This is my responsibility. This is my woman. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me and Stephanie took care of it. And... um. The lady looked at me and she job. said, she tried to say, oh, well, he canceled it. But I didn't say nothing to her because hmm. we cremated her. And um, just so I wanted to wait till I get the ashes back. That's it. And then when I get Smart the ashes, man. then I'm going to go ahead and I'm Smart expose man. her. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because Lacey was she a big yelper. Now, but... Yeah, really. Yeah, she was a big yelper. So, so or do you want? Uh, so uh, let me ask you this. Do you want to expose it now? Expose it now. Oh, you know the name of the um, the funeral home, right? Yeah. It's all right. This we can do that. We're on broadcasting exposed. radio. Exposed. Caballero, Westchester in Miami, Florida. Yeah. All right, guys. I just called it out. And it's okay because if you're feeling that it's not right for the public, no, for the people, terrible. say it. Is Her is name is Laura. Laura? Hmm. Laura, the funeral director or something? Terrible. Huh. Really? Uh, Scumbag. That's what you yeah, I call can't it. really Scumbag. say what I want to say. I know, because it's broadcasting radio. You know, but let me say, Prince, this goes on 24-7. Yes, it, it does. It doesn't get called out because people just, like he said, they just they overwhelmed. Don't better. They and don't anyway, know better. They're so emotional. And like my brother-in-law and them, they were in there and they, they were like, I'm a boisterous person. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't 
I ain't got no hair on my tongue, as we say. So I can speak what I want to. I'm not scared to express myself. You know, we peace on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> We're not. So, uh, so with the situation, when I came in, she already knew that there was a problem because of hmm. how I conducted myself. And I sat down with her. Like, look, this is, I understand it's a business, but... You don't need to be taking advantage of people the way that you, And imagine all of the funeral homes all over the place. They're all upsell. But it's not upsell, Prince. They pocket that extra cash. It's insane. They pocket that extra. We had a just call in, we and did. they're listening, and they're saying they're enjoying the show. They ask, can you say the name of the funeral home one more time? They ask time? that. Yeah. Nice and slow, please. Caballero, Westchester. Yeah, and Miami, that's in Miami Florida. Miami, Florida. It's off of Bird Road. Got it. It's off of Bird Road, and it's um, it's it's next to Tamiami Park. It's um, a very reputable, supposedly, funeral home. Hmm. But she was just, I just knew it. I knew, I know better. I've had a bunch of deaths. My older brother, he got he got murdered in '98. He got shot five times. Sorry to hear this. I had another brother in 2007. He died in my arms. He got stabbed eight times. Goodness. Um, so I'm familiar with death. You remember that, yeah, Chino? Rest in peace. And this is all in South Florida. This, well, yeah, one was in Pensacola, Florida. One was in Miami. And then Lacey got murdered in Las Vegas. Got it. And so... So I, there's two right now that's free. There's three Did they them. capture the woman? No. Nope. What? She's with the shooter, the main shooter. From what I understand, there was two shooters shooting her. Hmm. But I can't get into detail, so I don't know exactly. Right. But the woman, the female... She's a 21-year-old female, Whoa. and she's running with this, I think he's like 30 years old. So they're right now on the run together, and then the, the third and final suspect, he's on his own somewhere. So they're, they're watching me. They're watching my every move. Interesting. Which I want them to. You know, the FBI is involved with it. Wow. Yeah, it's a very big situation. This is not... Um, Las Vegas aired it. Um, Channel 7 News in Miami yeah. aired it. I did Interesting, a, you Miami? Know, have you ever heard of Wynwood in Miami? Yeah. I, yes. Well, it's an art district yeah. in Miami. Okay. And what I had done, very good friends of mine, man, um, SK and Dizum, my friend Smiley, they um, did Some a, DJ Smiley? No, no. Ah, no. that was my boy. Go ahead. But they <laughs> did a big wall, a mural. Whoa. I mean, and you, to get your face in Wynwood, only celebrities go up there. Come on. Like it's a, it's, yeah, I've heard of Wynwood. Can, I, a, can I get a picture have. of that? Sure. I would love to yeah, share that. Share I got that a song, website. a tribute song made for her. You got to send that to us as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you know, have, you send it to if I'm not mistaken, you have a nonprofit right now for yes, her, right? Yes, ma'am. Can you please release that? It, it is um, Lacey's Legacy Nonprofit.com. It's, um, it's going to help a lot of people. It's, um, and this is what you said, that you want families to be able to uproot themselves if they go through anything drastic, dramatic, murder, rape, anything. You want them to be able, to, be able uproot. to If they want to, they have the opportunity and ability. Some people might not want to because that's their house and they For want sure. to keep their memories. I get it. But there's a lot of people that are stuck in that environment and they have to constantly li relive that tragedy hmm. every single day. So. Yeah. This, this organization is going to help people kind of, and also not just re, you know, relocate, but also with, with funeral expenses. Wow. And then the most nice. important thing is to be able to deal with people like myself that could help you through, mm. because it, this is an emotional thing. Like, even for me, it's like, I cry a lot <laughs> and. Which is not normal. Yeah, I, I, you should release it. No, I'm gonna. It I must be released. I, I can't hold it back. And she was, um, she was a big part of our life. She came into my life in a very dark time in my life. I just got over my brother's murder. Wow. So when she came into my life, she was in a bad. We just, we just meshed so well <laughs> that we just came up and we owned companies together. Come she on. She was young, was but beautiful. very mature. <laughs> and she wanted to be successful. And she never had an, and she had bad relationships, men dogging her out and treating <laughs> her bad. Um, 
and she she had been raped before and i think that was one of the issues when when this people came into the house her first reaction hmm. was to protect herself Steph. protect stephanie because mm-hmm. mind you i'm not home wow now if you go back i'm there at the house and i'm hearing them kill her man so i mean without her doing what she did I'm dead. dead. You all would be They're going to kill me. For yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. They're already terrified They shot at you. You all would be. And you were held at gunpoint. She you guys, well, I, I, I'm i going to, you know, God knows what he's doing. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he knows who to call home, who not to. Uh-huh. And he left them here still. So, you know, you guys know you have a purpose still, That's right? It. All yes, right. I know the destiny and... I mean, it, it's real. It's You're t- still t- here oh because you still have a, you have a mission. You still have to go on. You do. He gave you a mission. They all do. As well as her. They're, they're going Absolutely. To it's not over. It's on. not. No, I know. And he knows that very... you guys are the strongest candidates to take over. Yeah. I say that all the time that I I was chosen because I'm the small, I'm um, the strongest hmm. out of the whole, the the family because it was me, Steph, and Lacey, and, and, and mentally. I'm the one that could handle this the best. If I was gone and they were here, it'd be a whole different situation. Yeah, I get that. You know what I'm saying? So, and here, her destiny, one of her destinies was to um, to change me. You have a smile on your face. That's it. So we're going to keep oh, it no. locked right, right and, there. And she did. Yes, she, did. she did. We're going to keep it locked right there. We got to get a couple of more songs in. All right, let's do and that. And we're going to close off with them we'll and Attorney James. That's right. And we got Mr. James right here. Attorney James Thanks Smith changing James. the game in Orlando. Oh. So you guys keep it locked to Peace on the Streets Radio Show. It's been an emotional roller coaster here today. It's a-